Let the peace, love and blessing of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The one to undertake the final assignment. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 5, verses 39 to 40. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also, and if any man will sue thee in, at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Golden text, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. Then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Do not joke with this chance. Quote, Brethren, I have already told you that this is the judgment arena and that there is no other place where people will be gathered for the purpose of making defensive statement in order to be freed. And when you fail to comply with what, with what is being given to you daily here, then you will surely stand condemned. Do not rejoice because you find yourself in brotherhood of the cross and star, but rejoice in your ability to practice the words of God. There is time for everything under the sun. There is time for one to be taught and there is equally a time when one is reminded about what one had been taught. Also, there is time when the injunctions of God must be put into practice. Similarly, it is said that many are called, but few are chosen. All those who are able to practice God's word will be gathered together on one side, while all those who refuse will be kept on another side. In that instant, there will be a big line of demarcation between two pastors, between one child of God and another. Same will happen between Christ's witnesses. This will be so because all those who will not practice these injunctions will be carefully brushed aside. Right now, you are in the study period and so every morning you are expected to come in here for lectures and there will be a time when you shall be examined on these things you have been taught equally there will be a time when all those who pass in the promotion examination will be promoted to the next class while those who fail will have to repeat the same class what you are being given now will help you to realize your shortcomings and where and when they had started. All those who are the children of God do not impute sins on others, rather they take everyone equally. The three lessons read out to us now have truly revealed to us that love alone is what was asked in starting this fellowship week in particular and the year in general. Do not say you have not heard or that you do not know because had I known 
is not accepted here. Why is it that God has mercy on you, but you do not have mercy on yourself? With love, God has called us to himself, so as to teach and change us so that we might be able to teach others what he has taught us. Nevertheless, God does not regret the call he has extended unto us, but God loves what is good and will not have any association with evil. Hence, he continues to tell us about this daily. Let our first lesson be read again. Listen very attentively. First lesson, Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Brethren, I, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. That is the work of brotherhood. It is said that you who are the children of God and you who are the disciples of Christ, being members of his family, if you see somebody committing evil, you are not supposed to cast a stone on him or to excommunicate him nor are you expected to quarrel with him. Rather you are to tell him, to, uh, rather you are to call him to order with love. Follow him with a lowly heart and peacefully restore him back to his lost position. That is what is required of us in this kingdom. Always find peace in any place you may find yourself. Do not avenge any evil do any evil doer or tell him woe betide you or abuse anybody nor be offended with anybody. Do not ignore or abuse anybody, for if you do this you will have committed a greater offence. When you become offended with someone who commits sin, you have automatically committed a greater sin. When you judge or abuse someone when he sins, on such an occasion you have erred. That is why you are advised to beware, lest you fall into the same condemnation we are to endure each other and bear with our brethren on the occasion of derailment. This is what is incumbent on the children of this kingdom to do. At all times, no matter the situation, be in love, in peace, in tolerance and unity with one another. There should be no occasion for anger. Do not talk to anybody harshly. Do not quarrel with anyone or blink your eyes when somebody errs. We are to realize that we have a father who is no respecter of persons. And so, anytime we quarrel, hate, grow annoyed, or do anything contrary to his injunction, then we shall have erred and would be no more worthy to be called his children. If you say you are a child of God, and when going on blessing, you struggle to be in front. You struggle for a food. You scramble for a position or talk to people arrogantly. How will the world consider you? The conclusion from every reasonable man would be that you do not believe in God. So, from the first day of the week, the first week of the month, the first month of the year, you are constantly admonished that we are now under the law of love, our law of humility, of truth, of mercy, of tolerance, grace, and that there is no more room for any iota of sin. No one therefore is expected to be angry, to quarrel, or tell lies. No stealing, no hard-heartedness, no fornication, no imputing of sins on others. And indeed, 
No trace of sin is expected from you. That is why if you see someone who does these things, you are to restore him with love to his lost position. Brethren, you have the need to be guided by these principles. Let our second lesson be reread. Second lesson. Matthew chapter 5 verses 39 to 40. But I say unto you that he resists not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Brethren, that is what you are called to come and do here in this kingdom. You are not called here to come and eat, insult, abuse, or to speak evil against anybody, to fight with anybody, or seek to rule over anybody. But you are being called to come and love one another and be forgiving to your offenders. You do not come in here to impute sins on anybody, but you are to live peacefully with everyone. The moment you abuse your brother or quarrel with him or be offended with anyone you have erred, it is stated that the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking but living in peace with everyone. And again, it is righteousness and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. There is no other thing that earns you glory apart from living in peace and love with one another, tolerating and enduring each other. And when someone comes to see you in this manner, he would have no alternative than glorify God. Let our golden text be reread. Golden text, Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 22. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Brethren, take note and behave. The bearing of one another's burden is what has been read to you in that golden text. Do not fight or abuse an evildoer. Do not hate him or try to dissuade him. Do not even utter any condemning word at him are preventing from doing anything unto himself, but leave him alone. For anybody who offends you, treat him well. If anyone hates you, love him. And if any person abuses you, bless him. If anyone does not greet you, greet him. If anyone disregards you, you have to submit and respect him. Do not listen to or consider bad any evil someone may be doing unto you. Indeed, it would be a pitiable situation for one to notice any brotherhood member abusing, getting angry or quarreling with another person. When you grow annoyed or show any anger at the instance of a slight provocation, it would be summarized that you have not yet started at all. A good child must resemble the father. You have been seeing what is prevalent here. Despite all the things that you do, I do not answer you. Why then should you not imitate me? It is said that when the eyes sees the corpse, it must shed tears. But you are seeing the corpse before you. Why do you not shed tears? At the slightest provocation, you will stand on your toes and trade words with each other upon all the evils you keep on committing, which is abominable here. Do you see me expelling you?
Moses came to release the children of Israel from bondage in the land of Egypt. Elijah came to punish all those who did not obey God. And John the Baptist came to preach repentance to his father's sheep. Our Lord Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ came to shed his blood for the remission of the sins of the world so that man will be once again united with God. But the work of the Holy Spirit personified is to teach and lead all the all is to teach and lead all to the accurate knowledge of truth. He is here to teach you to love in real practical terms. And so if you do not resemble him by having love, then you are not a true child of God. This is not just about reading the Bible regularly or being eloquent when giving vision. I have come to teach and lead you to the accurate knowledge of truth. You cannot compare this work with anything in the whole world. I know what each and every one of you are doing. I equally know everything about the entire world. The Holy Spirit is quite knowledgeable. He is also loving, truthful, humble, peaceful, meek, and highly possesses the virtues of God. He practically exhibits these qualities in order to teach you about them. Therefore, if you do not adhere to the teachings, then you would not be fit for the kingdom of God. A, cha a chain for salvation. Since the creation of the world, love has not come into existence. Mercy has never manifested itself. Righteousness and other attributes of God had never surfaced. Ideally, it is these virtues that I have brought today unto you. Therefore, if you realize the level of your shortcomings and then seem not to bother, then you then will surely stand condemned. You have seen true love with your own eyes. You have equally seen the truth. You have seen patience, humility, righteousness, and all the special qualities of God. Therefore, if you fail to possess them keenly, you will infinitely blame yourself for the position you will unfailingly find yourself. When Peter asked our Lord Jesus Christ how many times his brother should offend him before he forgives him, whether seven times, Christ replied and said, I do not say seven times, but until seventy times seven. You are not expected to impute sins on anybody at all, but you are to walk in this path till eternity. You are not expected to lament, to be angry, to sigh, to gossip or backbite. You must not have anything to do with any manner of sinful act. Beware, for this constitutes the light which is positively, which is positively the kingdom of God. When you come in here to play, do you consider this place a playground? The law court that is operational here in this kingdom is, is these teachings imparted to you daily. And so when you tell lies, fornicate, steal, and in, and in totality, if you do not abide by these teachings, then you have automatically been found guilty and you will then stand condemned. But all those who seriously put these words into practice are the real children of God and they will never have problems. We do not want to really overload you. The world is empty. Take for instance the case of 
and wag and wag and wago who was given out as a type by the mother to God. She was here all right and had received all these teaching but later on she decided to go out and struggle for money in order to enjoy the world. Some days ago was she not the one who testified here about her hard experiences in the world but for the mercy of brotherhood in her bid to enjoy the world the reverse would have been the case where do you think you can go to in order to have salvation or life the same thing is happening to many christ witnesses and christ servants who have decided to go back into the world after having perfectly receive these great and recondite teachings of the Father, their situation can be better imagined than described. In the entire universe, there is nothing that you can enjoy without paying for it dearly. The food your mother gives you, the education your father gives you, or even the social amenities which are given by the government are being paid for quite dearly but here you are in brotherhood where everything including your life is given out to you out of love but when you are told to exhibit this same love which has been extended to you gratis you adamantly refuse then what do you think of yourself brethren it is said a cow does not know the usefulness of its tail until it is cut off. You have heard the question from Peter to Christ whether his brothers has to offend him for seven times before he would stop tolerating him. But Christ replied and said, I do not say seven times, but seventy times seven, which means that there is no question that will necessitate you not forgiving your brother. You are not to make faces for anyone. No anger here, no hatred here, no malice, no vengeance, and definitely no case for an unwholesome behavior. I am the head or I was the first to be hero does not exist in this kingdom everybody is equal you sometimes climb up to the position of a president but within two days of doing so you start to be restless and yearn for peace whatever you may be a royal highness a governor or what have you there is no peace in the world but see what is obtainable here in brotherhood everything that makes life worth living is here in abundance peace joy love good health wealth and righteousness yet you pretend not to realize this continue in your unbelief happily enough those who will benefit from these teachings are coming and on the way then you will find yourself where you had never expected do not doubt the word of God. It is stated that the kingdom of this world has certainly become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. Believe me, brethren, there is no problem whatsoever in this kingdom, for there is no anger, no lies, no contesting or scrambling for position, no stealing, no concoction, and no suppression till eternity. Therefore, when you defy and go contrary to this system you have heard, that is when you tell lies, steal, fornicate, or commit any vice, you are completely out of the kingdom, and so you cannot share in the glory of this kingdom. Furthermore, you cannot gain entry into this kingdom through money or wealth, for the only entry qualification is love. 
the world, the world will pass away, but this kingdom will endure forever. This is the kingdom already spoken about by our Lord Jesus Christ, and it is the very kingdom that John the Divine saw in his revelation. Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold the tabernacle, behold the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Write. For these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is, lo it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderers, and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came out unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last place and talk with me saying come hither i will show thee the lamb's wife and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy jerusalem descending out of heaven from god having the glory of god and her light was the light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and at a wall great and high, and at twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And he, and the wall of the city had twelve fountains. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city light four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, the length and the breadth of and the height of it are equal, and he measured the wall thereof. And hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with, with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second was sapphire, the third 
Cole, the third, Charles Federy, the fourth, an emerald, the fifth, Sardonyx, the sixth, Sardius, the seventh, Chrysolite, the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, a topaz, the tenth, a Chrysophrastos, the eleventh, a Jacinth, the twelfth, an Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass, and I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there, and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Brethren, there is neither day nor night there, because the Lamb of God shines within it every time. No lamentation there, here, no luck, no sickness, no death, but what is constantly prevalent here is joy, it is peace, love, good health, etc. Outside of this kingdom, you experience sickness, hunger, warfare, death, court cases, and detention, segregation, and discrimination because there is no atom of peace out there. You are not being pleaded with to come in here. Anytime you take a positive decision, it will be for your own benefit. But when you fail to listen and abide by this teaching, you will be lost forever. Peter had earnestly expected this new kingdom wherein dwelleth righteousness in vain. So, brethren, I do not want to be tedious unto you. It is stated that a stroke of the cane is sufficient for the wise. Let he who has ears let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.